Hi, this is Paula from All Basely Soap Company. Today I'm going to make some lip balm. Uh, actually, you've missed <laughs> the part where I've mixed all my um, butters and oils in there, but I'm going to try to explain to you what I've done before. Uh, in my barrex, I've melted cocoa butter, coconut oil and beeswax. Those are the three main ingredients in my um, lip balm. It has a tiny drop of castor oil that actually is really good. Uh, it gives a bit of shine to the lip balm and a bit of glide as well. I've added a few drops of peppermint essential oil. Not too much because it can be a bit stingy if you put too much. So uh, a tiny bit in there and I stir very well. When you raise the temperature of all these butters uh, to sort of above 70 Celsius, any bacteria that are in there is killed. Uh, uh, so it's important to get everything quite high in temperature. So, but afterwards you need to let it cool down enough to add the essential oil because you don't want the essential oil just to flush out of your lip balm. So I've let it cool down enough to add the essential oil and now I'm just taking my time stirring because I don't want it to be too hot uh, when I pour it into the lip balm tubes but I think it's kind of ready now and I'm getting ready to to pour actually I'm quite messy when I pour but uh, I think I try my best for the video Here we go. So as much as I try to line them up, uh, yes, I do make a mess, but you know, you can clean it with a tissue. Um, that's not a problem. So I don't have the exact quantities of my recipe, but if you aim for equal parts of beeswax, cocoa butter, and some kind of soft oil, then it's a good start. But you've got to adjust and try because it's not the same uh, making lip balm in a tube. Uh, it's not the same as making lip balm in a tin, for example, because in a tube, you need the beeswax to be higher percentage than in a tin because you need uh, the lip balm to be harder. If you're making a lip balm to go in a tin, you will lower your beeswax or up your soft oil so it's kind of softer so when you put your finger in it then you can get a little bit out so you know you've got to play with different formulas and adjust as you as you go along until you find what works for you and this works for me i love it uh, you know where you put your lip balm the uh, first thing in the morning and actually it stays in your lips you know because I remember when I used to use the, the cheap ones that had paraffin in them. You put it on and then, you know, a couple of minutes later, you kind of feel that you need to reapply again. Not with this one. This one stays. So this is the big difference and it really protects uh, your lips from the weather and the harsh winds. This it's, it's, um, it's unbelievable. It's how um, lip balm used to be made in the old days, you know. Um, so I finished pouring and it solidifies super quick. So just 10, 20 minutes later, they're, they're solid enough for me to label them. So I, before I did this, I did spray isopropyl alcohol. Uh, so I would uh, get rid of any leftover oil that could be outside the tube, wipe it with a, with a cotton cloth so they're really really clean uh, and the label sticks well so this is very important i you might not see in the video but i spray isopropyl alcohol all the time when i'm working with cosmetics for this little job i have to remove my gloves because otherwise there's no way i can stick those things in in, in the lip balm but i've disinfected my my hands i use hand sanitizer so everything's clean I've got my little trick there. Can you see the tray that has got a lip and I rest the lip balm tube in there? I've got my little methods, you know, for making my labeling easier. 
and as you can see I make really small batches everything I do it in really small batches I like all my products to be very fresh when you buy them sometimes that means that uh, products go out of a stock you know every now and then and it's like a cycle you know they go out of a stock and make some more I try to keep everything in the stock but sometimes you you beat me to it <laughs> and then it stays for a few days out of a stock and but this is the beauty of it it's all really small small batches it has a really nice color doesn't it um, Actually, in my formula, I like to mix half of my beeswax. Beeswax is yellow and the other half is white. So it's actually neither or, yes? I, I like a little bit of the yellow wax a scent and color, but not all of it. So I mix both and I find this is the perfect combination for me. The thing with natural lip bands is that, you know, you have to be a bit careful with them because if you leave them in your pocket or you're near a radiator and they melt, they hardly ever solidify properly again. So they tend to go a bit grainy. So I would say just don't leave the lip balm in your pocket. Obviously, this product is natural. So because it, they haven't added, or I haven't added any other ingredients to make it more stable, it means that um, you have to be a bit more careful when we are using it, yes? So don't leave it in your pockets to get all melted and then, you know, it will go a little bit grainy. I've got really good feedback about the lip balms, I think, you know, we sometimes forget how... Uh, products used to be in the old days, you know, and then the shops have all these cheap lip balms that don't do much to our lips and, and then we forget what good stuff is really like. So if you'd like to try, I don't know what I'm doing there, ah, I think I'm going over all the labels, you know, to make sure they're well, well stacked. I think I'm, I'm tied in the map because I'm going to the market tomorrow and I will take them like that on a tray. They, should, they really quickly go. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed watching this video. I know it's a bit random, but I just wanted to show you how I do things and talk you through them. Um, I hope you see you next time. Thank you.